Welcome all to this evening's webinar, Master the New Features in Our Online Banking and Mobile Banking App, brought to you by the Innovation Forum at First Caribbean and Client First. I'm Jason Kinch, Director, Digital and Client Experience uh, at First Caribbean. Um, before we get started, yeah. Thanks. Before we get started, uh, just a few housekeeping points. Our webinar, as I said, will cover master the new features in our online banking and mobile banking app. Uh, we invite you to an a option to answer your to ask your questions. We will be monitoring Q and A for questions. Uh, a recording will be made available 48 hours after the the event has closed, and uh, we'd love to have your feedback. So please make sure you do the survey at the end. It is my pleasure to introduce today's presenter, Leanne O'Sell. Leanne is the product owner for our digital channels at the bank, and she is an eternal optimist. She gets excited whenever she is implementing something new. Welcome, Leanne. I know you have some like, interesting information for our viewers this afternoon. Thanks so much, Jason. Yes, we have some interesting things that we're presenting on this evening. But first, uh, this is the only time we're going to use chat. So we want we invite everyone on the call to tell us which country you're joining us from. So if everyone who is on all of our 174 participants at the moment, please just go into chat and let us know where you are from. And we also need to know, we, we have a poll that we want to just test to make sure everything's working the way that it should. So we, everybody, we want to know when it comes to having a pet around the house, which do you prefer, a cat or a dog? So let us know. You should have a poll pop up on your screen. And each person should be able to complete that poll. And we should get our results shortly on that poll. And I'm very curious to see whether we have cat people or dog people here on the call today. So I'm just going to ask the team to pop up the results. Do we have the results popping up? And the dogs have it. We have dog people here today. I'm very excited about that because I'm also a dog person. And unfortunately, I couldn't vote. Okay, great. So our polls are working and let's move forward. So our session today is going to cover three main topics. Uh, the first one is first pay and you guys have heard us talk about first pay, I believe on numerous occasions, but we added a new feature in December of 2020, which was the gift option. I'm not sure how many people are aware of gift. So we're going to touch a little bit about first pay. We also want to talk a little bit about two factor authentication. And we will be actually launching shortly two-factor authentication. We're going to roll it out country by country. But, so we want to give you an idea of what is two-factor authentication, but also help you prepare yourself for um, it coming. And then thirdly, we are going to give you a sneak peek at our upgrade for mobile banking, which is coming in June. So really exciting stuff that we're going to touch on today. But before we start all that, I'm sure you guys have seen an email that was sent out that we have some giveaways. We have some $25 Amazon gift cards that we want to give away to our clients. And I'm going to invite Shane to tell us a little bit about those giveaways. Shane, over to you. I'll be happy to, Leanne. Three persons can win an Amazon gift card this evening, which can be used to finally purchase that item you had your eye on or you had in your Amazon cart for a while or maybe you haven't picked anything yet. You can choose from thousands of items on amazon.com. For example, you can get the super comfy pillow from Amazon to complement that super comfy night's sleep you'll be getting, knowing you have our mobile app with its advanced security to keep your money safe. How about a nice electric toothbrush to help you polish that pearly white smile everyone will see whenever you receive a gift? using our first pay gift option on our mobile app. You can get yourself some AirPods, a blender, or even a robotic talking companion 
to turn on and off your lights and play your favorite music just because you can. The rules are simple. To win, just pay close attention during the webinar. Be the first to respond to the question correctly and listen out to hear if you've won. Simply include your name, email address, and your response to the question on screen in our Q&A section as soon as you see the question on your screen. Are you ready? Oh, I'm definitely ready, Shane. Thank you so much. And so let's start with our first question, shall we? So as Shane mentioned, you need to put into the Q&A your name, email address, and your response. And the question is, provide your name, the country that you're from, and one thing you like about our online banking and mobile app. So we're gonna give some folks time to go ahead and do that. And we're gonna announce the winner as we progress through the presentation today. So let's talk a little bit about what is First Pay. So First Pay is the ability to send money to another CIBC client, and you don't have to provide or you don't have to have their account information. You use the contact information that's already saved to your phone. It is easy to use, it's instant, it is person to person, and most of all, it is actually free. And I'm, I'm not sure if everybody has their first pay enabled, but if you don't have it enabled, try to enable your first pay today. So how do we send a first pay? Well, let's give you a demo of that. So you would go to transfers and then you would click on transfer via first pay. You would select the account you're sending the money from, and then you would click on transfer to and select your contact from your contacts list. Once that person has first pay, you'll see that little green tick there, and then you just go ahead and put in the amount. Once you've keyed the amount and you click transfer, then you will be sent what we call our OTVC code, which is a five digit code. Once you key that code back in to verify that it's you, it's that simple. The user who, the recipient who receives the first pay will get a notification letting them know that you just sent them a first pay and you will get a notification letting you know that you just sent a first pay to that individual. It's that simple. But there's more. Now you can send a gift card with your first pay. And I'm not sure if anybody's noticed when you go into first pay, you're now going to see that cute little circle that you can actually select at the very bottom. And what does that mean? It means that instead of the message going and it says that Leanne sent Jason $20 or $50 or $100, it will say Leanne just sent Jason a gift. Log on to your online or mobile app, online banking or mobile app to see what that gift is. So it's perfect for birthdays, graduations, and other special occasions, Christmas, et cetera, or just because you want to say, I love you. So please try using our new first pay gift option next time you log on to mobile banking. And Thanks now, you. and now, oh, you're welcome. <laughs> and now we have a winner. Shane, can you tell us who that winner is? Sure, Leanne. Our first winner is Graham Dunkley from Jamaica. You get a card. Congratulations, Graham. So you should get that card shortly. So let's move on to our second question. How do you enable first pay on your phone? Is it A, go to transfers, select first pay and choose the account? Is it B, go to card security settings and select freeze my card? Or is it C, go to settings, select first pay and choose the account? Remember, let us know in the Q&A and put your name, email address, and your response. Please let also let us know the country that you are, you are in so that we can also announce that when we're announcing the next winner. Good luck, everyone. So let's move on to our second part of the presentation, which is two-factor authentication. So I'm gonna play a quick video so everyone can get an, an, an idea why we're implementing two-factor authentication.
Okay. So let's talk about a little bit about what 2FA is or two-factor authentication. It's an extra layer of security that helps protect you from cyber attacks, data loss, and identity theft. Now, everyone should be familiar with 2FA in that we use it for certain types of transactions. And an example is if you are adding a payee or if you're adding a bill, you would then use your two-factor, you would be sent a two-factor authentication code, which we will refer to as an OTBC, and we'll get into that five-digit code later on. And so you'll be sent that code and you plug that back in. So we know that you are, you are the individual actually adding the account and that's our validation. What are we looking to do? We're looking to implement two-factor authentication at login, which means that when you log in, you would be putting in your password, which is your first part of your first factor authentication. And then your second authentication would be the five digit code that we send to you as you're logging in. And how does it work? Each time you enter your password to log on to online or mobile banking, you will be sent that five digit code. Now, I want to remind everybody, we recommend that you should have more than one two-factor authentication. You should have at least two forms of two-factor authentications in your contacts. And we're going to show you how to actually do that today. So let's talk a little bit about what is an OTVC or a one-time verification code. That is that code that you receive, as I mentioned, which is that five-digit code that comes in as a text message. Or it may be a call where they actually announce what the number is if you have it set to your work phone number or your home number, etc. Now, you can receive these OTVC or one-time verification codes to an email address, but it has to be a work email address. If it is a free email address, we will not send it because we want to protect you as a client and e free email addresses can be easily hacked or you can have it come to one of your contact numbers and you have three options when you in your contacts to set up these two FA um, things. So you have your mobile number, your home number and or your work number. So you have three options to set up two FA. So as I mentioned before, and I wanna keep emphasizing this because I think most people only have one two-factor authentication. And if something happens to that mobile phone and most people have it on their mobile phone, we wanna ensure that you don't lose access to your online or mobile banking, especially now that we're introducing 2FA at login, right? So it's gonna be really, 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 really important that even if it's after you get off this webinar that you go and you set up that second 2FA, okay? So how do I add another contact number in terms of my 2FA? So the first thing you'll do is you'll go to your preferences and we're gonna show you on your mobile, mobile device to make it easy for you. You can go to your preferences and then you click on two-step verification, contacts and two-step verification. As you can see on your screen here, there are some of them that have the 2FA enabled and those ones are the ones that have the green shield as you can see here so as i'm looking at the screen my mobile phone has 2fa enabled and my primary email has 2fa enabled i have a phone number registered but i have not enabled 2fa to do that we would click on edit or if we want to add another 2fa or another contact number we would click on add so i'm going to add the work phone number so let's assume i clicked on add then we would key in the number. Now it does give you guidance on how to key that number in. And then beneath the actual phone number that you're keying in, you can enable, which is it is optional, but as I mentioned, you should have at least two. You can then en enable two-factor, two-step verification at that point. So my recommendation is that you do enable that two-step verification if you're adding your work number or you're adding your home number. You will then be sent an OTVC code to your to that same number to verify that you can receive those codes. So that's the first step in terms of verifying it. Once you receive that verification code, so it may be actually a phone call if it's your work number that you have to answer and the recording will actually announce that number to you. Once you receive that and you plug that back in, you click continue. And then we verify your identity. Because this is what we would consider a protected transaction, we always verify identity. So we would then ask you to put in another OTVC code, ask where you, 
so we're asking you to verify where you want that second code to go to and it has to be one that's not already set up so for instance you would send it to your mobile phone so you would click send code now and we're just verifying that you are the correct person to be doing this type of transaction once you have verified yourself then we successfully save your work phone number and as you can see it's now set up and the work phone number has that shield attached to it which says that you now have two-factor authentication for your work, work number okay i'm going to repeat why is 2fa important one more step it's one less worry it increases your security so that if your password is cracked you have a second layer of security and it helps you avoid being a victim um, of being fished etc and I will re-emphasize, we recommend that you enable two-step verification for at least two or more of your contacts. And I just want to emphasize as well at this point, please ensure that your contacts are up to date. When you do any kind of third-party transaction, the emails and SMS messages go to those email and, and um, email addresses, as well as the SMS messages go to your mobile phone. And this helps to further protect you from any kind of fraud that could be happening on your account because you're alerted immediately anytime a third party transaction, a third party transfer is performed. So let's talk a bit about if I only have one 2FA and I lose that 2FA. So for instance, I have a cell phone and I've lost that cell phone and I have no other two factor authentication. There are other options for you as a client it's called a passcode. Now you may remember setting up your passcode when you first did your security checkup or you may not remember it. It was during that security checkup. It cannot be the same password or same, same digits, et cetera, as what you use for your password. And the passcode is used if you lose access to all of your two FAs. What happens is if you're, once you have your passcode, you would call the customer service center you would report to the customer service center, I've lost access to my 2FA, can you please enable passcode for me? And we will, for a period of time, allow you to use passcode. You will then attempt to log in to your online or mobile banking, use your password as, as usual. But then what will happen is once passcode is enabled, a screen will pop up and ask you to put in your passcode. Once you've keyed in your passcode, we will then ask you to set up all of your contact information again to ensure that you have we have your latest contact details so very very important if you don't remember that passcode our recommendation is to go and update it today and you can go and update it in your preferences so how do i reset my passcode if i've forgotten it I can log on to online or mobile banking and I can go to my preferences. And then when I go to my preferences, I click on passcode and then I will key in my recovery passcode. Just a reminder to everyone, there are certain passcode requirements that you have to follow. Your passcode has to be between eight to 14 characters. It must contain at least one number, one capital letter, one common letter and one special character from the list that we have and you'll see that when you're when you're in that particular screen and it must be different from your 10 previously used passwords and your 10 previously used passcodes passcode is case sensitive so you have to remember what your passcode is we recommend you keep your passcode somewhere safe if you have a safe you can write it down and lock it in your safe um, if you have a special area in your phone which is password protected, then you can also uh, put it there as well. You will be prompted for an OTVC code when you update your passcode. So that's very important. It generally will send it or ask you to send it to your mobile device via text or via um, phone, via voice. Once you've keyed in your passcode, you can just click done and that's it your passcode is updated so just please remember to save and store your passcode somewhere safe and we're on to question number two the winner is over to you shane sure leanne our second winner is wendy capron from trinidad you get a card well congratulations wendy that should be arriving via email shortly to you 
And now on to question three. And I know that everybody's a pro at this right now. How do you get ready for two-factor authentication? Do you A, go to preferences and enable your facial recognition? B, add an additional contact. And if you do not remember your passcode, update it. Or C, do nothing and hope for the best. Please don't forget, you're gonna be keying into your Q and A's, your name, your email address, your country, and your response. And we're now gonna move on to an exciting part that I was, I was looking so looking forward to sharing with everyone tonight. And that is our mobile banking upgrade. We are doing a mobile banking upgrade in June and you've asked for it in your reviews in our app stores. And I just wanna say, we do listen. So we will be giving you all of the functionality that you have in, mo in online banking in mo the mobile app. So you will be able to, in June, add billers, add pays. You'll be able to reset your password. You'll be able to register for mobile app. You can set up schedule payments. So I want to take this time to reveal the new look and feel to everyone so you can see what it looks like. We haven't changed a lot of the functionality and how you use it, but we've just upgraded the actual look and feel. And so without further ado, you can see it's changed a little bit. And when you go into your accounts, we have, it's very streamlined. Very, we've added some icons to your transfers to make it easier to, see, to pick up the transactions that you want to do. We've added scheduling as you can see. In addition to that, under bill payments as well, you'll see that we've added some more icons to make it easier for you to pick up which um, type of function you want to perform. And that's basically it. That's our unveiling of our mobile app. And Shane, I'm hoping we have a winner by now. So Shane, over to you for winner number three. Sure, Leanne. Our third and final winner is Crystal Fenty from Barbados. You get a card. Congratulations, Crystal. You should see that in the email shortly. Okay. And so now we wanna hear from you. We tested our polls, we wanna find out from you which of these features excites you the most? Is it A, two-factor authentication at login? Is it B, mobile banking upgrade, the new look and feel? Is it C, first pay? Or D, gift cards? It should be popping up on your screen now in terms of your poll. And we're just going to take some time to complete the poll. I'm really curious to see what everybody's excited about. And I'm hoping that everybody's put in their answer. And I'll ask if we can just pop up the results. And we are seeing that mobile banking upgrade, new look and feel. At, most people are excited about that, 54%. Coming in second, two-factor authentication at login at 19%. And then we have first pay at 17% and gift cards at 10%. I'm excited about mobile banking upgrade as well, for sure. And we wanna hear from you as our clients. What features do you wish to see in the future from us? Is it A, schedule branch appointments, B, QR code payments, sending and receiving a payment using a unique QR code? Is it financial management? Tell me how I'm spending my money by category and give me some budgeting tools. Or is it cardless ATM? the ability to send and collect money from the ATM without your card, you can pay someone using this as well. So we're gonna pop up that poll to you now, and we're gonna give everybody a chance to put in their selection. And just wanna mention what you select in these types of things and what we're seeing in the app stores as our clients, your feedback is so valuable to us. It actually goes into what we would consider our pipeline and our roadmap in terms of delivering better quality um, tools and services to you. So I think we should have everyone completing the poll by now. And can we pop up that poll? 
And the winner is Cardless ATM. Send and collect money from the ATM without having to use my ATM card. So 48% of individuals like that feature. 21% is a close tie between QR code payments and financial management. And then 10% um, like schedule a branch appointment. So thank you guys so much for your feedback. That's gonna definitely help us in terms of what we start working on next. And so just want to do one key recap for everyone. We talked about First Pay. First Pay lets you send money locally to other CIBC clients and you're protected because it's using email address and phone number. And we've launched our gift card feature, which allows you to send a gift card to someone, make it special for them on their birthday, at graduation, et cetera. We talked a little bit about two-factor authentication where it's an added at login, an added security layer of security for you, the client, to protect you against cyber attacks, et cetera. And in doing so, we talked about that OTVC code, that one-time verification code, that five-digit code that you received today. And finally, we gave you a preview of our mobile banking upgrade, which is the mobile app. And the great thing about that, guys, is everything that you can do in online banking, you will now be able to do in the mobile banking app. And so now we're opening up for our Q&A section. And we do have one more gift card to give away. We just didn't announce it earlier. So I just want folks to stay on to the very end. Um, so please remember, uh, to type your questions in Q&A, and then I'm going to hand back to Jason, who's going to be managing Q&A this evening. Oops. Jason, over to you. Thank you, Leanne. Okay, so let's see. So we have a question here from Candice Lysitz. What if I don't have a second phone number or work email address? So if you don't have a second phone number, work email address, I please ensure that your passcode is up to date and you know what that passcode is because you can then enable passcode if you lose access to your two-factor authentication. Um, so that's an important one. Go in today, update your passcode, make sure you know what your passcode is um, because that's your way of taking control and being able to reset all of your information if you lose access to your, your mobile phone. Uh, so Leanne, can you say again, where would you go to update the passcode? So you would go to your preferences in either online banking or in your mobile app. And within your preferences, there is an actual option that says passcode, update passcode, and you would just click there and you would just need to type in your new passcode. It's very simple. We're not asking you for your old passcode and then the new, we're just asking you for your new passcode. Okay, thanks, Leanne. So, I have I have an issue, uh, Chrisona Powell. I have an issue with my online banking where I've changed my number and I want to add a payee. How do I do that when I no longer have the old number and it's asking for the old number? It's sending the the um, one-time verification code to the old number. Okay, so. Well, you would have at this moment in time, you would have to come into the branch because we need to visually ID you. That's why passcode is so important. If you remember your passcode, you can use your passcode. And so you can call the customer search. You can call the customer service center, ask them to enable a passcode and you can use the passcode. Um, if you don't remember your passcode, the only option at the moment is to come into the branch uh, to, so we can visually ID you. We have to update your number. So we would deregister you from um, online and mobile and then just have you click register now again. And I, nothing will be lost, everything will be there, but we just need to update your number in our core system. Um, so those are your two options at, at the moment. Uh, so I'm hoping that you do remember your passcode. Thank you, Leanne. Uh, looking for the questions. So Leanne, are all of these two-factor um, changes mandatory? 
We will be starting our launch in the Bahamas, and it is mandatory in the Bahamas. The, the government of Bahamas has dictated that it is mandatory to do two-factor authentication. We will, then be slow, we will then be rolling it out to other countries. We want to give our clients the, the best platform and the most secure platform. It is very, very secure. So it is. It will be coming, yes. And um, we want our clients prepared for for the fact that it is coming. Uh, it is just best practice when it comes to having that added security. So we want what's best for our clients. So Leanne, another question: uh, If you if you pay a service provider for your personal email address, can that be used if you don't have a work email? It depends on the how secure that personal email address is. We do have some that we that we do block because we've had instant where we have picked up that folks can probably um, hack into those or fish from those email addresses. Um, so I, I I think maybe I should also defer to you, Jason, because it's your it's your area of expertise. But some of them we do not allow because we have seen in the past um, instances where attempts have been made and our clients were protected, but we want to make sure that you're always protected. So I, I don't know if you want to jump in here, Jason, and add anything to that. So, so typically we stay away from the free email services, uh, you know, Gmail, Hotmail, et cetera. Um, and, and just simply because those free email services are most likely to be hacked. Uh, and so, you know, we, we want to give you the utmost in protection. Uh, so it's recommended that if you have a, a domain that is not one of the free email services, uh, that you use that instead of your you know, Gmail or Hotmail account. Uh, I saw a question in the chat. Uh, guys, please remember to uh, use Q&A for your questions uh, as opposed to the chat. I, the question was, uh, it, it popped up, uh, it was, uh, can you do wires without having to go into the branch? And the answer oh. to that is most definitely yes. In fact, we encourage you to use online for wires as opposed to going into the branch. Yeah, I will, I will second that one. Uh, and our using, doing international wires in, the, in online banking as well as in the mobile app, is really really easy in terms of being able to set up your payee and to also send your wire i just want to remind everyone that if you're in in barbados or if you're in bahamas that there are certain central bank requirements that have to be satisfied before those wires will go out we do have some messaging that pops in the up in the app to remind everyone to get your central bank forms in in barbados and then in the bahamas there are certain things, for instance, like invoices that need to be um, sent to the branch before that payment can be released. But yes, most definitely you can use the app as well as online banking. Um, with the introduction of the upgrade, you will be able to set up your pays as well um, in the mobile app in June. So that's something to really look forward to. Okay. So Leanne, I have a question here for you from Rastan. Uh, and, sorry, um, not a question, a suggestion. Make the PDF payment confirmation available to share via mobile. So that's something that we should put in the in our backlog. Yes, thank you for that one. So yes, we will we will do that. Um, it will be coming, I believe, at some point. We do have it in our backlog, so just look out for that. It, it's not going to come in June, but it will be coming. And then. Uh, there's a question here. Can we send funds via First Pay internationally if the person has a local account, but they're just in the U.S. temporarily? So if they're in the U.S. temporarily and you're sending to their local account, the answer to that is yes. Um, so you can send to their local account. Remember, it's local account to account. So if they are located in the U.S., it doesn't matter where they're located. Um, if the account is a local FCIB account, most definitely, yes, you can send a First Pay. If you are sending, however, internationally, then you would need to use an international transfer. As we have a question here from Kathy and Curacao, 
uh, is there an option that when you use your Visa debit card, you can get a notification? So Kathy, that's a, a complicated question specifically uh, for Curacao. Uh, Visa debit cards in Curacao, when used at a local merchant, do not go out to Visa. So right now, the way the system is set up, your alerts, the, the, the alerts feature comes through Visa and, and not from and not directly from First Caribbean or from the merchant system. Um, so when you are in, when you use it at a local merchant, that is settled local loop. Well, what I mean by that is it doesn't leave the country. It travels from uh, First Car from the merchant to First Caribbean to request uh, payment, and then we we provide payment. Uh, and so for those transactions, you won't get a notification. Uh, if you do it at an international merchant, you will, however, get that notification. Uh, we are in the process of working on fixing that to ensure that going forward, all local loop transactions will uh, benefit from the alert feature. Great question. Thank you. So here's one from uh, Sean Harewood. Will the mobile app allow me to access all my accounts, including my business account? Yes, if your business account is a sole owner, sole trader account. So if you own that business, you can add your um, your business to your online and mobile banking. Um, the way to do that would be to reach out to your um, your relationship manager and they will update your information with us and change the code to allow it to be viewed. So you just need to reach out to us and it's a very quick um, thing that they can do so you can have access to it. However, if you, ha if you have a partnership, et cetera, and more than one person is required to log on to your um, business account, then we recommend you use our corporate online banking. Another question, uh, what about for two-factor, if I am in another country and I'm not roaming, how do I get uh, my second factor or authentication? So that's a really, really good question. So in that situation, you may have to be roaming if you need to access your banking. So you would, may have to turn it on so that you can receive your codes because the codes come in as an SMS um, and that's the only way that you would be able to receive the code. But it's a great question. The other option may be that if you have a secure email, you have that set up as a two-factor authentication. That way, if you are traveling and you're on Wi-Fi, you can access your email and the code can come to your email address. Thank you, Leanne. Uh, here's another one. Uh, and this is probably one for our backlog. Uh, any chance of allowing us to perform mobile deposits from the mobile app? Oh yeah, that's a really good one for our backlog, Jason. So that's one that we have to start looking at. And by, by mobile deposits, do you mean uh, de like check deposits? Uh, because uh, that would depend, I, I believe that would depend on, on the, the country that you're in and, and the laws for the country. But that's a very good question, and it is definitely one that we will look into. So here's another one. When a transaction is done via Visa Debit, you, get inst you instantly get a text for transaction. Uh, is, there any, is there an option to have a notification when funds are deposited to your account other than First Pay? So in terms of if we're talking about salary deposits, et cetera, we do have that in our pipeline, in our backlog to look at. Um, so it's not available yet. It won't be available in June, but it's something that we are looking at because we know that some of our clients have been asking for things like salary deposit notifications, et cetera. So it's something that we do have in our backlog to look at, to work on. Okay, so here we have a, a quite another very good question. I normally do online banking, but I wonder if it's more secure than mobile banking. I would say both are 
both are very secure. So it really is preference. Which one do you prefer to use? Um, if you are the type of person that's on the road constantly and the phone is your only um, point of contact or, or the only thing that you have with you, that would be your preferred option. So it's really and truly up to you, the client, which option you like. Um, both are, are very, very secure platforms um, with lots of, and, I, and I'll defer to Jason on this because he is our, he's our guy that makes, he is the one that makes sure that everything is secure when it comes to online and mobile banking. So I don't know if you want to answer that as well, Jason. Yeah, sure. So uh, as Leanne said, you know, we, we go through quite a bit of effort to ensure that the platforms remain very secure. Uh, we have, I mean, there's quite a bit of, of testing, et cetera, that we, we go through. Uh, and I would say, as with any platform, uh, the human link is the weakest link in the platform. If you use a unsecured password or, or a, a non-complex password, or if you use, um, you know, the, the same password on multiple platforms, you risk your, your chances of getting hacked. And that doesn't matter if it's your, uh, if you if it's on your cell phone or if it's uh, online. Uh, another key point uh, to note is that we would prefer if when you, you use the platforms, uh, you know, that you bear in mind that we don't send you emails with links. We will never ask you to, to um, send us your password in an email or uh, anything of that sort uh, so that that way we can avoid the phishing attempts that we typically will see that generally are the ways that customers get compromised online. Can I just add to that, Jason, as well? Um, if you receive emails, just be mindful. Hover over the address of that email. Does it look as if it's coming from a legitimate source? Those are important things that you should always do whenever any email comes in. We never, as Jason mentioned, um, request password information. We also do not ask for OTVC code. Um, so at any given point, if something seems a little bit suspicious, reach out to us first. Um, we do have links on our corporate website um, and you can actually reach out to us. There's a mailbox that you can send to us and you can forward those emails that you've received and ask us, is this a legitimate email from the bank? Um, so, and, and, also, if it seems as if it all of a sudden it's very, very urgent, chances are it may potentially be someone trying to fish you, right? So take the time to review the email, take the time to, to hover over uh, the links. If there, if there is a link that's sent there, please don't click on it, right? Um, the only time we will send links is, some, is, is basically what you would have had today, which is, um, a, we are doing a webinar, join our webinar. That's the only time you will see any kind of links or et cetera coming from us as a bank, right? So be just mindful. And if you're on the side of caution and contact us because we will be able to tell you whether something's legitimate or not. Okay. Lots of questions, Jason. <laughs> no, I'm trying to, I, I'm trying to, to, to there's this scrolling. So I'm trying to find the next one. Ah, so I, I've been making transfers to a pay at Scotia without any issue. Last week, it was returned after three days um, with no explanation. Uh, is there any reason why that would happen? So I would reach out to the bank to just understand why that happened. It would depend on the the method in which you sent it whether it was um using standard or if you were using urgent uh just to give a little bit of background standard is our local bank ach so it's how the banks connect with each other um and and uh urgent is using a different platform our swift uh it's swift network platform so it really depends on the platform that you sent it through right so what i would say is reach out to our customer service center um, because usually that does not happen um, so that we can research it to see exactly what's happened to, to your specific um, transaction. So uh, one other point I would make is uh, 
Scotia and a number of other banks in the region have been consolidating their branches. And so the transit number that you would normally use to send to uh, may have changed uh, or, or that a branch may have closed and they no longer are using that transit number, at, at which point um, they will reject the transaction because there's no the, the, the uniqueness is account and transit number. And if they can't identify what account or if they don't have a transit number that matches for that account, uh, they will uh, reject the transaction and send it back. Um, after, and generally, it'll the turnaround time is about three days across the ACH for that. So uh, we can, as Leanne said, if you call the call center, we can investigate further and, and get the exact reason why that transaction failed for you. Um, if my second verification is a cell phone, will the code be sent via message or a call? It's up to you. If it is a cell phone, so you would you would select. You have to make sure that you select cell phone or mobile phone when you're when you're putting that in because once we determine it's a cell phone or mobile phone, you get the option to choose between SMS or you get voice call. So it could be either one. Um, so it's entirely up to you what your preference is. Thank you, Leanne. Are there any First Caribbean bank account restrictions or exceptions that prevent online money transfers to overseas bank accounts? Okay, so we only have restrictions in terms of your limits, um, in terms of, and, and Jason, you can jump in and answer this one as well. Uh, our, our limits when it comes to international wires are 20,000 US per transaction, 20,000 US per day. So that's one of our limitations. If you want to send funds above and beyond that amount, um, you can come you can uh, come into the branch and sign one of our forms, which gives you um, additional, uh, and then you can apply for that additional limit. And then we will program that into the system so you can do transactions above that 20,000 USD. Uh, Jason, I don't know if you want to jump in here and add anything more to it in terms of restrictions. Uh, so uh, there are certain restrictions that would apply depending on the country. So, for example, if your country, the country you're sending to is on uh, a terrorist financing list or something of that sort, there may be some restriction to sending to that country. Uh, but generally speaking, uh, there are no restrictions in terms of country, just as Leanne mentioned, uh, the amount. Now, um, obviously, there we, we have to comply with various regulatory um, laws uh, and, and policies. And therefore, these restrictions are sometimes subject to change. So for example, uh, you, you may not be able to send to Cuba for, for the time being, and then as policies change, you may be able to send to Cuba again, just using that as an example. Uh, here's one. Oh, okay, I think Shane is going to answer that one. Uh, how do you send central bank digitally send central bank documents to the branch in instances of international wire transfers? So, um, in terms of international wire transfers, out of and this is this is Barbados we're talking about, Jason. I'm assuming. Uh, did, did did say which country? Or, yeah. So I'm assuming this is Barbados because this is that's the main country that you would um, think. You need to drop in the form. It has to be physically signed by you. Uh, so unfortunately, you cannot email it in. And that's a requirement of the government of Barbados. So you'll have to drop it into the branch, a signed copy of your central bank form. Um, if it is a case where one of the reasons, the reason is one that is not an allowance, for instance, 
uh, you have a 5,000 allowance for gifts, et cetera, um, you may have to, you would first have to go into the central bank and get approval and get have, a, have it stamped, et cetera, and then hand it over to the branch in order to send it. Thank you. Uh, so I'm a, res a US resident. I have a CIBC savings account in Bahamas. I get monthly credits from NIB. Can I transfer those Bahamian dollars to my US account? If so, how much can I do per month? So I think the best thing is to reach out to your branch to get more information on that. So reach out to your branch manager, et cetera, to get more information. Um, because you're doing, because again, it's BSD to USD, there may be some restrictions relating to how much money you can transfer from your BSD account to USD accounts. You, you will definitely have to uh, make contact with your branch to get more information and more details on that specific question. Um, so we have a question here. Um, will we be able to scan checks and deposit into our accounts? Not at the moment, you won't, um, but it is something in our pipeline that we're looking at. So I think it's, it's I think someone mentioned that um, earlier. So it's something that we're adding to our backlog, right, Jason? Yep, most definitely. Uh, so due to COVID travel restrictions, what is being done to facilitate personal banking services for internationally based customers? A lot of services seem to be available only if you are located in the Caribbean. I currently have access to online and mobile banking. So we are trying to pivot um, to facilitate our international clients. Um, I would recommend as an international client uh, that maybe you reach out to our customer service center. We establish some sort of relationship in manager, et cetera, for you so that you can interact with them because obviously it's a little bit more difficult. In most cases, what we do ask for is if we need any documentation signed, et cetera, it has to be um, witnessed by a justice of the peace in your country, et cetera. We are trying um, to improve every day. We're trying to improve our client experience in terms of those clients who cannot easily get into the branch. And COVID has obviously helped um, accelerate that. So please look out in that space. We will, uh, we will be continuously trying to improve our service in the space for those particular clients. Okay. Um, I have a mortgage payment. It's taken from my account. Can I pay additionally uh, via online banking? Unfortunately, in the moment, you can't pay additionally via online banking. Um, that is something that has been brought up in the past in terms of, um, and it is in our backlog. Um, it is just for us to figure out when we would be working on something like that. But we have heard clients ask for that feature in the past. So we do have it in our backlog and in our roadmap. I have another question on first pay. Uh, will you be considering raising the limit for first pay transactions, especially for persons who sell or buy products with high premium prices? Um, yes, we are considering that. Uh, today, the limit is 300 USD per transaction, 1500 per day. So we will be revisiting the limit to see if we can um, give our clients some improvements in terms of that. Okay. If I already have online banking in Barbados, how do I access an account I may have in Tortola? Oh, that's very simple. If you have an account in Tortola, you should be able to go into preferences once the names match in terms of both accounts. So they're identical on both accounts. Then you can go into your preferences and add an account. You should then be able to key in that account in Tortola and 
Um, and then once you key in that account, an, OT, uh, an OTVC code would have to be sent to the contact details for that account in our core system. If your information is not up to date, my recommendation is first um, come into our branch and get it up to date so that you have um, so that you can receive that OTVC code. Once you get that OTVC code, your account will be added to your online banking. You'll be able to see all of your accounts in one location. Uh, we have a question here. Will the limit for TAP contactless transactions be increased? Well, I don't think I can answer that one. Jason, can you? <laughs> uh, That's yeah. a takeaway, I think. I think we have to, we have to take away. <laughs> okay. All right. I, I believe that's a takeaway, but the but the reason why it is what um, it is set where it is is to protect you, the client, because tap means that you're not putting any code in. Um, it is a convenient, and it's for it's supposed to be for small value, convenient type transactions, and we want to protect our clients. Um, so, having putting that four digit code in is your security whenever you go and you use your point of sale. Um, so I don't know if we would want to jeopardize that security by increasing that limit, but we can take it forward to the cards team. Okay. So there's a, a question in the chat. Um, someone uh, is asking, they missed the majority of the presentation and they're wondering if there's some way that they can see the slides or if this presentation will be done again. Uh, so I just wanna state that we will be uh, sharing the video of this in 48 hours, within 48 hours. So stay tuned and we will, we will send you the link to the video. Okay, Leanne, uh, any final comments for our listeners? No final comments, just want to share the last page of um, our presentation. So let me just cue that up. Uh, we want to remind everyone, one, we want to say thank you for taking the time to come to our webinar this evening. But we also have one more giveaway for everyone. We do have a US 25 Amazon gift card. And it's very simple to enter to win for this card. Uh, you can complete our survey and rate us in the app store. We'd like you to go to the, um, the, the iOS and Android app store and rate us. Uh, and it's very simple to just do this, um, the survey. All you have to do is you can take your phone right now and you can just scan that QR code that you see up there. It should take you straight to the actual survey itself and just complete the survey. It takes under, under two minutes to complete this survey. And um, if you provide us with your email address and you go and you rate us in the App Store, you'll be entered in a raffle to win that final US dollar 25 Amazon gift card. So I just wanna say thank you guys for taking the time to attend our webinar. Um, it, it's, it's been great for me to be able to share with you all of the things that are coming in terms of online and mobile. There are exciting things that are coming and there's even more to come in the future. So we want you to please um, keep a lookout in, for the, in this space um, because we're, we always are striving to be number one in digital and, um, that's, and we're always trying to keep it fresh and different and improve and, and focus on client experience. I don't know if you wanna add anything else, Jason. Um, no, Leanne, thank you very much. Uh, I want to thank everyone for attending. Uh, I hope this has been informative. And, that, and if you have questions, feel free to uh, continue adding the questions in the Q&A. We still have about a minute. Um, we will try to get back to everyone that has answered, asked questions with an answer. Uh, and yeah. conversely, uh, if you have any challenges, please feel free to reach out to our contact center uh, to see how we can help. So we're going to leave this slide up so that everybody has a chance to complete the feedback survey. So we'll leave it up for the next 10 minutes so that everyone has that um, chance to click on that QR code. Okay, so thank you, everyone.